This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello, ha, and how you doing? Gordo the Techs are here. Welcome to another thrilling and exciting episode of Hibachi Talk. I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody. It's good to be back. We're going to have a real, uh, no guest today and no Angus today because you did a pretty incredible 80 mile hike yeah. um, a week or so ago. We're going to talk about the Patagonia, hiking the O. Yeah, hiking the O. Yeah. So how many people know or even know where Patagonia is? Yeah, well, I, I tell you what, you, you, we, we signed up for this trip. Uh, sort of a friend of ours wanted to go do it. And my wife says, well, that sounds great. Let's go. So we, we actually in, in committed to the trip before we figured out where, where it, Patagonia how far was. away it is. <laughs> It, so um, grab a libation, pull yeah. up the chair, and let's well, let's get into this exciting um, uh, undertaking. So well, where the hell well, is? So you are Ostoria. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, it's it's bigger than I, I knew, but the the region really spans Chile and Argentina. Okay. In in the very very southern part of South America. Oh, so you're at the tip of South America. So, all the way down to really the Straits of Magellan. Sort wow. Of, so. One of the towns that we linked through, sort of the gateway town into the, the national park there at Torres del Paine is called Porto Natales, and that's on the Straits of Magellan. So there are, you know, Ter Tierra del Fuego, there's a little bit other land and islands and stuff south, but by and large, you're, you're way, way down there. You know, you're with definitely in a few hundred miles of the tip. Now, did you take any photos that you're going to be able to show us? So we'll, whenever they're ready, they can start to run those, and um, I'll, I'll, we'll just walk through as many of them just as we kind can. Of, yeah, because you've got a sure. bunch. We flew, um, I can tell you for us, it was L.A., you know, Honolulu to L.A., L.A. to Mexico City, Mexico City to Santiago, Chile, which uh, was, you know, those are six hours and then five hours and then eight hours, and then here we are, we got to Santiago, uh, that looks like punch bowl. Nice and hot, summertime down there. Oh. Um, uh, so this was on top of, uh, we climbed up, go to the next picture, we climbed up to the top of uh, this, uh, uh, oh, I forgot the Pope was in town. Oh, really? So the Pope was in Chile, <laughs> there he is. Wow. He was cruising by in the Pope mobile. Do you realize if Cardinal Sicola had become the Pope, it would have been Pope Sicola? Pope Sicola? <laughs> like, like, that's a play on words, isn't it? He... He, uh, <laughs> but it was interesting that, that he was there, so that was kind of a, a thing. Oh, is that you? you did expect. you take this picture of him? Yeah, there you go. Oh, did he know who you were? No, he just. I think he's just cruising by. Okay. <laughs> um, but the next picture is uh, where the first where the first one was shot from on the top of this. Uh, 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 I think it was a fort in the time. It's really from the early 1800s. Um, Hidalgo. Uh, it's up on a town, kind of in the middle of town. So Santiago's huge. I had no idea. Eight yeah. million people there. Oh, wow. Uh, really big city. And so you get there, and um, we had a, a one-night layover there. And the next day, we had to take off to our uh, uh, to Porto Natales, which I mentioned, mentioned earlier. Is that the night you slept in and, and missed And we kind of slept in and missed our flight there. <laughs> and so we, was a little, we were a little late catching up with the crew that we were hiking with. But uh, we, we made it. Oh, you're um, killing me. It wasn't terrible. So go ahead and give us the next shot. And we're in... Uh, this is um, this is on the drive. So obviously, you know, you're headed and you, you start to see the park because you we we're kind of going down along the, the coast in a, in a lot of areas. And there's just a lot of coastal area down there in this in the southern part of South America. So is this a glacier? Is this are you heading? Oh, out sure, to, sure. This is a glacier, right? Yeah. And so the the park itself is really situated at the southern end of I believe it's called the San Juan Glacier. And it is the largest ice sheet, the third largest ice sheet in the world. Wow. So, you know, you've got Antarctica, and then you've got Greenland, and then you've got this ice sheet. And I'll show you the terminus is where we, uh, one of the spots that we hike to. Right. Um, which is really the, where the melt is, is occurring. Um, wow. We got hooked up uh, once we got there uh, with, with our guy, Pablo, uh, a native Chilean guy. He was a biologist by training. Spent a lot of years in the lab wearing a light white lab coat and a really intelligent guy and decided he wanted to experience the world out in the world himself. So he became a guide and uh, he was really, uh, really fun to work with. Um, this was actually at the, um, at the entrance to the park. Uh, wow. So you do have to sign in. They know how many people are actually inside the park. So it is a controlled area. Wow. And this um, is go the so government controls? The yeah, the government of Chile. Wow. Yeah. And so and there's park rangers and things just like we have here. Oh, um, look at that. 
Yeah, so this is a view when we started to leave, uh, heading out of the park. You can see some of the campsite down there. Mm -hmm. um, and we were headed out away from that lake. We drove in from that end. And uh, the first part of our day, you know, after all that travel, you know, you spend a day and a half, you know, nearly two days of traveling, and you get there. And the first day, our hike was, uh, ended up being about 19 miles. The first uh, day. Pretty big, 32K. Um, so we're starting off this morning. That was about 7 a.m. Okay. Um, had Christine lay down in the field and take some pictures. It's summer there, so the flowers are blooming. It was a, it was a nice start. You know, you, you start off on a day like that, and you're not sure what to expect. Um, we had great uh, sunshine, which was fun. How did you um, manage 19 miles after all that travel? Yeah, and so you get, well, you get out of bed and you go. Um, this is a very interesting spot we got to in a few hours. It's called Windy Pass. And you can see me standing over there holding my arms up on the right-hand right side, but right. the wind was about a steady 100K. Oh, so wow. At a 60-something mile an hour, we're sort of laying down, actually laid on that rock at one point like, like an airplane. It just was flowing in it. But the, the videos, which, which we didn't bring today, but the videos show how uh, the, it's actually pressing on the screen. The wind's blowing so hard when you're trying to film it. It made the, the, the video look kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but we were headed back into those mountains. You can see back there and in the back of the screen and down along this lake for a while. So this was a, this was a kind of turn a corner where we've been hiking uh, north uh, for several hours. And then from this point here, we kind of started to deviate east uh, along the top of the park. So you're not staying at hotels here. You're no, actually no, this is camping. camping. This is camping, yeah. right? And so this is interesting. The, when... Um, uh, 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 what was his name? Not uh, the, the dictator of, of uh, in Chile. Um, oh, I'm, his name is going to blank on his name right now. But um, when he took power, he protected a lot of the, a lot of different families, mm -hmm. and so many of the families that were had ranches and um, estates around this property got protection, um, and so they still have these. So in some areas where you're you're in the park, in some areas you're crossing outside of the park into boundaries that are actually still private land that they allow you access to and through and for the park. Wow. Pin Pinochet. Oh, yeah. So Pinochet, Pinochet, he protected uh, a lot of families. And actually these families own the water, they own the water rights, they own the energy rights, the hydro hydroelectric. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, but there's, so there's a, a bit of a give and take there. Yeah. Uh, they are a major employer down there, obviously. Yeah. Um, and here we are heading down. This is Enchanted Valley after leaving Windy Pass. Uh, headed back along this river. You can see the Torres del Paine River, which yes. snakes out of there, which really comes from all those glaciers that we're going to be heading into. And um, It must have been chilly. Um, oh, uh, no yeah, pun Chile. intended. Yeah, yeah. Chile. These I days, just, were, the days just, were in the in the 50s and 60s. I, I, mean, did, I just made that yeah. up. I don't even know well, where it, it was. Came there from. were some nights that were in the, in the, I'd say it wasn't even 40. It got cold, that's for sure. You know, it's, um, it's not at high elevation, but it's sure. Uh, it's, it's windy and cold. Oh, that's beautiful. And some of the high, so you had beach, really beach forests, some uh, mature and some immature beach forests. Uh, primarily that's what, and there's also an evergreen beach. There's a lowland highland. Uh, we did get educated in that. A lot of stuff to forage along the way, a lot of different berries um, that we were able to pick and eat, which was really nice. That's nifty. Um, just a beautiful little hike. This was a, a spot through the woods. And periodically, you know, they'd have their, their camps. Dixon was our first uh, night. We were headed, so this is at a point where we had reached one of the uh, police uh, camps um, at uh, Los Perros, and then this was letting us know we had about another eight and a half K to go to get down to Dixon. To get down to Dixon. And okay. those, they count K a little differently, and we could, we, we could, we'd have eight and a half K to go, and it seemed like it'd take us another 12 K, but anyway. <laughs> and here's our first glimpse of, uh, this is um, uh, Saros, I think the hanging glacier there at uh, Saros. So this. So that's on, the glacier right there. Yeah, well, that's uh, one of the smaller ones. So that that one's just hanging there. It's um, you know, it's just some frozen ice that that does drift up into the field, but it's not one of the larger ones. Hmm. But it's a pretty nice. It was our first sighting. You know, the time you're headed in there, and you start to see a glacier. You're like, wow, you know, we're starting to get back into this place now. Yeah. Pretty. And it's the summertime. And there's another view of. So zoom out on that one. You'll see that one is a. Uh, that's a picture of that same hanging glacier down over in, in some of the lake. In the I mean, you can see the glacial moraine. All that's been carved out, right, by the right. by the glacier. Um, so is the glacier retreating? Um, yeah, and, the guide and, say and that I've got some evidence of that for sure. Okay. You'll wow. see all that stuff. But this this moraine, this stuff all happened because of the um, they had what's called an, an intrusive volcanic uh, eruption there, where it went up to the sedimentary layer and, and just filled in. And then when the glaciers carved it out, so you get all this sedimentary rock and then metamorphic rock and then sedimentary rock 
on the sides of the walls, and it's really beautiful. Um, and that, that's why, whereas you know, like an extrusive volcano like we have here, where it blows out the top. Right. Um, so, but but this one, the ma the magnet was contained Stays between layers within. of sediment. Yeah. Wow. So it's really interesting. Um, and that was finally Camp Dixon. You can see it there. We're finally oh, yeah. dropping down. You can see Dixon Glacier. There's a huge one in the background there on the left. Uh, that's Dixon Glacier. This is Lake Dixon. And we finally made this camp about it. It was about 6 or 7 that night. You know, we started, I think, at 6 or 7 that morning. So wow. it was a nice long day. Is there fish in those waters? No, there's just too much mineral minerality. Too, They're okay. too close to the glacier. Too close to the glacier, Super so you don't, there's nothing in Further, there. you know, obviously 50 miles downstream, yeah, but not, okay. not at this point. These are You're right up near the glacier terminus in most of these. So this was the next morning headed out of Dixon. I spent a good night there. Beautiful stars that night. I had to get up and use the restroom at like 2 a.m. And it was just, the sky was just lit. You could see the Milky Way just crystal clear. It was super beautiful. Because there's no ambient so clear. light. No light Nothing. at all. Yeah, there's no one up here. I mean, we were out, they're out in the middle of nowhere up here. That's very Really neat. beautiful. Ooh. So this is our way up Gardner Pass, which is the other corner uh, after traversing east sort of along the top of the park. Um, and you can see this moraine. All this is carved out. This is pretty rough going. You know, it's, um, it's, it's, you just, it's the kind of rock you just want to roll your foot off of and twist your ankle up there. This, you know? is, it's, um, this is not for the faint of heart. I yeah, and, and you see, obviously, we're out of the woods now. We're very exposed. It's not super high, but um, again, the glacier just carved everything off and there's nothing there. Uh, plenty of water, though. You can take your, your water. You don't have to carry a small bottle because there's streams constantly. You just fill your water bottle up right out of the glacier waters. It's, it's you don't have to worry about any clear. bacteria. Or yeah, nothing like lives that. up there, That's so it's perfectly nifty. clear. And this was, I think, I just I shot. This was kind of a last look back at that big valley we had come through. And we'd come from, you know, behind us and then back around to the left that morning. This <coughs> probably early <coughs> afternoon by the time we got up here. This is the top of Gardner Pass. And we're, this next shot, you're going to see what was before us. Um, as we headed, as we head to look out, wow. Wow, this is this is actually the top of it. That's I pretty think. incredible. And then so the next shot's going to show us Gray Glacier, which was our goal for the day, was to get to uh, our next campsite was at Gray. So there's our oh there's a good shot of our guy. This one zooms in. So Christine's on the right, and then Pablo, and then we had another guide, um, Katy, with us. This was her first time doing the O as a guide, so she was sort of a guide's helper. And then behind us there, you start to see all the other glaciers. I think the next shot's a good panorama of them. And this is a, yeah, so that's there's nice. a, so that's Gray, Gray Glacier in the bottom of the picture. And you can see behind it there, there's another one. There's actually five glaciers in this picture total. And I'm pretty sure the, the one coming up is a, um, what do you call it, a, a wide angle view. So of is this the first time you'd seen a glacier? No, I, I got on some in New Zealand. And I got okay. on some up in, uh, okay. up in Alaska as well. But how do they compare? So, but I mean, look at so there you are. Look yes. at the size of this gray glacier. And you can see off to the right that disappears up into that huge yeah, ice field I was going. talking about. It goes for hundreds of miles to the north. But to the straight across, you can see there's one glacier there. Yeah. There's another one above it to the left, and then on the left there's two more. Um, you can see five glaciers from this view here. It was yeah. really beautiful. So here's an interesting question. It's like d define a glacier because everybody, yeah, you know, I hear the term used, but what does a glacier mean? Well, the, uh, a glacier exists where the amount of, of snowfall is greater than the melt. Okay. Right. And so and that only occurs at certain elevations. Okay. And, and the thing about global warming is that elevation has continued to fall, whereas it used to be or it's, I'm sorry, it's, it started to raise. So it used to be much lower, so glaciers were much bigger and much okay. larger down low, and they right. held more and ice. And they keep moving. Oh, they're constantly moving. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're constantly flowing towards their terminus. Yeah, it's, uh, that's where all the, that rock that you see deposited yeah. there comes from. There's no glacier behind us there at the Yeah, beach. That's, not the, that's not a glacier. <laughs> and so I think the next shot as we made our way down gray is... Um, so, we, you know, we showed up at uh, John Gardner Pass at, at that top of that thing, and then, then you wanted to head left, right? And so we're, we're going to wow. work on our way from here down towards the left, uh, back down towards, I forget, uh, Gray, actually it's Gray, that's not, yeah, we made all the way to Gray Campsite that night. Do you actually hike on the glacier, or you go no, around not, it? No, it's too dangerous, so especially okay. down here, like this is, the crevasses up are very crumbly, so okay. it would be, be super dangerous, and that's, you know, probably, uh, I don't even know, on the surface, they're oh, several hundred that. meters thick. Yeah. So this, and so there's actually the terminus of Gray, Gray Glacier on the right-hand side. Right. And about 40, 50 days ago now, this uh, iceberg broke off. Oh, it broke off and this from is, that yes. other piece. And so this is a kind of a sign of that glacial or global warming you're talking about and the melting. That glacier uh, broke off. That's about 200 meters by 200 meters across, and it's about 1,000 meters uh, tall. 
So, you know, remember only 10% of it mountain. sticks out of the water. All the rest of it's underneath. It's very, very deep right there. So this will just now float. Yep, and I'll show you where it's going. And then the actual glacier 10 years ago used to disappear off to the left in this picture. All the way, it would go all the way down here. You, you would see nothing but glacier or all the way to the all left. All the way around. Where now that's all a lake. And 10 years it's and, yeah, retracted it's, it's back re to here. Yeah, yeah beyond uh, 4 or 5K at this point. Wow. There's an example of some of the, uh, this was interesting, the um, uh, national, the U.S. National Park Service went down to help these guys erect some of these bridges, mm. which uh, we heard saved us a few hours a day <laughs> from hiking up Having and around, around. these moraines. Yeah, so yeah. These, uh, uh, these were well done and uh, welcome after the kind of hours of hiking we've been doing, so I was happy to, happy to have some shortcuts, I guess you might call them. You know, we've been yakking here. Do we want to take a break or are we keeping going? Yeah, let's What's take a break. Plan? Yeah, take a break. All right. Okay. Uh, this oh, I look. This is really cool stuff. I didn't want to stop. Anyway, Gordo the Tech Star here with Andrew the Security Guy. We're talking about hiking, hiking the, o. the O. I like that. <laughs> I like that sound. So we'll be back in a minute after we pay some bills. Thanks a lot. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch. Hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha. Aloha. How you doing? Gordo the Techs are here with my good old buddy, Andrew, the security guy, who just came back from hiking the O in Patagonia. Yeah. And we've done some, some nice, interesting shots. And so let's continue on this, this, this journey, this journey, which was a total of about 80 miles, you said? Yeah, we hiked about 80 miles. And how many seven days? days? Uh, it was seven, day? seven total days of hiking. Seven yeah. total days of hiking. So that's a... Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. So, so we'll put some work in. I bet you lost a few pounds. I think I did. Yeah, you look like <laughs> I haven't been you on did. a scale. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, pick us up where we we left off with the glaciers. Uh, yeah. So we finally made our way around to Gray Glacier, which was um, whoa. You know, just one of the. If you don't do the oh, a lot of people hike the southern part of this particular national park, which is called the W. Um, so if you don't do the O, you really don't get up to this view up here at the top, which was really mm. just amazing, which is, I guess, why we subjected ourselves to it. But you can see all the <laughs> glaciers in the background, and this is Gray Glacier coming down Gray Lake, obviously. Um, and this is down near the terminus, down near where we camped when we finally got. This would have been about day three uh, into the hike. Day three of seven. And what elevation are you at? Uh, the elevation's pretty not that low. Much, I, I think right? a few. Th I think we stayed between three and five thousand. Okay, so you're not going to get yeah. deal with any of that that kind of. Yeah, there challenge. wasn't any. any uh, it was the hiking was wonderful. And we really you can see by the sky we caught great weather. I mean, you can have all four seasons in a day here easily. You get. Uh, can get hot, cold. Now, here's a good. This is a good shot of the terminus at Gray. So you can see some of the icebergs coming down the lake, and that you can see the the terminus up in the left hand side. Of that's, that. that's the uh, the glacier. That's the up Gray Glacier where it stopped in right. the lake now, but it used to come all. It used to be right up against this shore here. So that's about four or five k distance right there. So it, that's how much it's retracted. And do you in know over what period? Years. In ten, 10 years. years yeah. So over ten years, it's retracted back to that location. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, it was, it was quite obvious, you know, when you when you hear him talk about it. So, uh, this was Lake Piho. This was actually a gray gray cabin. The campsite is actually down on this. Is this lake had had a lot more filtration for the water got here. So this was the first time we saw blue water in four days. You know, everything okay. had been really gray and full of mineral uh, content from the glacier water. And this one had this one's downstream and around roundabout way that a lot of the filtered uh, filtration had occurred. So, so that, you can drink that a, right out of the... Uh, oh yeah, it's been an absolutely just beautiful. I bet, it, I bet it has a fabulous flavor. Yeah, and so Pihoe was uh, was where we stayed. Very nice. I There's like the first shot the of the Tories. You see the Tories in the back there. Yeah. yeah so, um, wow. Uh, this was... Um, 
a hike. We, so we worked our way on around, and then we got uh, to uh, Camp Italiano um, is on the way back up into the Torres there. So this is, uh, you know, so the signage was pretty good along the way. You, uh, they never came quite soon enough. And uh, you always had more on them than you th than you wanted to have left. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, it, it was it was one of those kind of kind of hikes where every corner, you know, once you made it around one bend or over one rise or or, or out of one valley, just all of a sudden there's another beautiful one in front of you. The scenery was just really big. Wow. And here's one of the guard spots. Of course, we didn't. Uh, I didn't have uh, any Spanish in me, so I. I uh, I, I typically just had to talk, and they were very good about knowing a little bit of English. And they they were good about letting you know. They would um, if you got there too late, they wouldn't let you continue for the day to the next guardhouse because they they kind of knew what it would take, and they didn't want you out there in the dark. Okay, um, that makes total sense. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting because obviously there was opportunities like this, some really uh, rough, rough water, wow. um, very cold water. That water is all below uh, forty degrees, I was and say, how uh, cold you fall is in it? or something like that, you're probably you know, in the dark especially, you're probably gonna have a, a difficult time recovering. Wow, that's terrific. All right, keep her going. You got about seven more pictures, I think. Yeah, so this is headed up, um, this is down around the other end of the W, headed up into the Torres. Our goal is to get up to those uh, peaks you see there. You see the different color, you can see that, how that sedimentary rock was on the top and then the granite's in the middle. Right. And this is a really good view <coughs> of the sort of the, the action between the volcanic action, and the glacier action that carved all these mountains out. It's just beautiful. And it was really something. This is a another tough day. A lot of elevation, um, you know, a couple thousand feet of elevation, as I recall, and uh, a lot of it hits you all at once. Oh, um, there's a look back at uh, one of the glacial lakes, and yeah, just beautiful. I think this might be a. This looks, looks like Horseshoe Lake, maybe. It's pretty impressive. Nice hat. Yeah, you had to stay out of the sun, obviously. So you know, a little sunscreen and a, and a wide brim hat once in a while help out. I think Christine was making me, trying to make me lug her gear. <laughs> yeah, that was going to be one of my questions when we, as we got through all the shots, was like how much gear you had to take and all that stuff. So, yeah, it wasn't too so bad. So be prepared wasn't for too that. Bad. So. Uh, so here we're getting up uh, pretty close. So this is uh, Lake Moreno uh, when we get finally get here. But you can see these towers approaching. Um, and you can see the difficulty hiking that, that terrain there. Yeah. I mean, it's just wide open and rock. There were uh, footpaths. Obviously, there's a lot of traffic on the trail for these. These are... This one's one of the epic like little routes there, and there are people who can actually get up there just for the day. Mm. They come in by boat, and they're able to get close enough that they can do this oh, hike so in one, one day, day up and out. I see. And so there was a lot of foot traffic. Yeah, uh, Andrew, that's me. I found a spot to take a nap there by the lake. That's <laughs> there nice. Once we got up there, someone standing on a Some rock. Some lady, I just uh, climbed out there to get a photo of herself out there mm. in the water, and I, I did sample that water. It is, uh, I could hold my feet in it for about forty seconds. It was really, really cold. Oh, wow. Um, but you see that, and there were some hikers actually, or some climbers actually, up on that middle tower there, kind of on the right hand side while we were there. There's some guys, uh, some you can actually see a couple of the cracks there. They were working. They were climb, hiking up there, or they were climbing up there. Yeah, they were, they were rock climbing up in there. Yeah, it was really beautiful. That's incredible. And uh, this was, uh, might be the, the kind of the closing shot. Is that shot, the last shot? Closing shot I've got for the day, but that okay. was uh, that, that's that was a goal. Once you got all the way around, sort of the goal was to finally get up to the, the Torres and back. So, so, so. Seven days, eight days. This was a, a seven days on the trail. Seven days on the trail camping. So, how much did you have gear? Did you have to carry? So we carried only our. You, you had to have several layers for the weather. So okay. you know, a shell, a sweater of some type for something under. Then your. I, I usually wear like a, a light layer of nylon or, or um, like uh, Patagonia. I have like some. Um, maybe it's like mixed with wool, a blend or something. A very yeah. light layer. I'll have that. I don't typically hike in it. Um, I did have a pair of board shorts just in case the water was inviting, but it never was. <laughs> I carried those and didn't get to use them. Uh, I had some gloves, you know, lightweight gloves, had a hat. Uh, you're carrying your lunch. Uh, good thing we didn't have to pack was a lot of water. So, again, you could just have a little bottle, which we had, which is enough. You just could fill it quite often when it ran and out. You drink a lot of water, but you just fill it as you go. Now, what about food? So, you met, we mentioned food. So, so. Did you stop for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or, uh, so, or did, yeah, how did this work? So we did have, this was, um, this wasn't like totally glamorous camping, but we did have, um, in the morning we had a cook at the campsite who would cook breakfast, okay. so we didn't have to, and they made our lunch for us, so you got a lunch in a bag, right, a brown bag lunch, and you pack that up and go, okay. usually a piece of fruit, sandwich, a couple bars, and then um, when you got to camp at dinner, again, there would be someone to cook camp at dinner, and we also, the campsites were set, so we didn't have to haul our own camping gear, our sleeping gear, our, our bags, all that. Um, we had porters. There were three porters that attended our group of eight. 
Mm. Uh, these guys had about 35 to 40 kilos on them. Whoa. And ran these hikes that took us, you know, hours. They ran them in a few hours with our packs on their backs. Ahead of you. With all of our gear. Not just mine and yeah. Christine's, but yeah. with all of our gear. Yeah. They would, and their own gear. And they would just take off. And they took off, yeah, and they would go. Yeah, yeah, really, really amazing yeah. guys. Really strong and young and friendly guys. And we had, had dinner with them at night. And yeah, they, were, they, were, they were really great. Were they there um, as as careers or were they there as yeah, portering, researchers? Portering's or? a way to start to break into the guiding business okay. there. Uh, you, our, our guide had started as a porter and so kind of like um, uh, in, in, the, in the Himalaya they have the Sherpa. Right. So it's a, a similar, similar uh, path. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they were great guys, you know, and strong. So what, what, what kind of things would you, would you um, recommend to the viewers, that, you know, things to, if they want to do something like this? Because you, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to do this and not do any training. You have to get yeah, yourself. You have to be in some I'd kind of it, conditioning. I'd call it moderate, you know, and, and the, day, the day after day, um, you know, if you're not used to something like that, you definitely want to have it in you. We kind of do a long day, short day, long day, short day, but the short days were still six hours, and, you know, you got, you know, maybe a little bit less than 20 pounds on your back, so you need to be able to make sure you can handle that so you can enjoy it. If, if that doesn't appeal to you, then I would definitely look into something that's more of a day hike. The Again, boat you could, and then the hike in and yeah, hike Yeah, you can, you can definitely stay there and get some a multi-day things. But, you know, you have a day of rest in between, perhaps, or something like that. Mm. Um, it's kind of one of those places that's so inviting that once you get there, you just want to go out in it. You know, the, the Guanacos, which we might call a llama, is the protected version in Chile. And they run wild. There are just thousands okay. of them everywhere. So like an alpaca. Uh, yeah, they look like one, but they're they're a little little different. Um, okay. But and the, but they're not uh, they're not they're protected too, so they're not hunted. There's puma there that hunt them. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't see any puma. We did see a fox. Um, there's condor. The condor were beautiful. We saw a lot of those guys. There's a lot of hawks and eagles, uh, big fish. Just uh, or not big fish, but big bird. You know, big birds and big game like that. It was just. Uh, just an amazing cool. thing. And they, they also do some horsebacking down there. So if you're not particularly Ooh, a like hiker and you'd like to do some horseback riding, a lot of these trails, because of those families, I said, they kind of ring the park. Yeah. Um, they have they bring all supplies in by horse, as a matter of fact, anyway. But they also have guided horseback on some of the trails, not all. That would be for me. Anyway, this is great. Thank you for sharing this trip. Yeah, it was, it was great. Thanks for, trip. thanks for listening. I mean, I'm glad uh, that, that when, we, when you said you were coming back, I really thought this would be kind of a cool thing to see. Awesome. And you were always doing these neat things. So I blame it on my wife. <laughs> I'm, I'm off to doing some hiking in another. Yeah, you'll, another have, some, you'll have the next vi video show. For the show. next 10 days. The photo we'll show. We'll see what it's like, but I'm not doing it near as rough as you are. I'm too old. All right. Anyway, Gordo the Texar, Andrew the security guy, thanks a lot for watching the show. And like we say at the end of every show, how, how are you, you doing? doing? <laughs> By the way, Hibachi Talk is sponsoring a golf 